This is the 13th video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. We're going to continue talking about record keeping. Uh, additions and changes should be made appropriately. Like I mentioned in the previous video, uh, any changes should be transparent, should be evident as to what the entry was originally, should be evident as to when the change was made, who made the change, and if appropriate an explanation for the change. It's probably not believable to never make a mistake in your record keeping. People will expect in paper records, they will expect to see some changes. Properly identify the record. First thing to do with any new piece of paper is to be sure you identify which file it belongs to. Which animal are you working with? Which owner are you working with? Uh, inevitably, if you fail to do that, you will find pieces of paper in your office that have important information about patient care and progress, but because it's not identified, you don't know where to file it. Uh, fill in the blanks. If you use any prepared forms for examinations or visits or evaluations or for any other purpose, use forms that are appropriate to the way you practice. Use forms that fit the way you practice. Don't use a form and then leave a number of questions incomplete. At a minimum, it makes you appear to be careless and not very thorough. Uh, worst case, it may actually help support by, that you breach the standard of care by showing exactly what you failed to do. So use forms that are appropriate uh, and, and fill them out completely. As you fill out forms, avoid the temptation to say anything disparaging about the client, the patient, or other health care providers. Uh, someday they may be looking at the record and you don't want to have disparaging comments. Make factual statements. So for example, if a patient is uncooperative, making a factual statement to that effect should not be a, uh, a problem. But making a comment about a client being a jerk or being mean to the animal uh, could certainly be a problem if the client were to ever see that record. Avoid judgmental words. Think carefully about what you're saying and how you say it. Uh, one habit I've seen in medical records is overuse of the word routine. Uh, doctors do everything and they describe it as routine. Um, it's always amazing to me when the exact minute or the exact step where the malpractice occurred, the doctor has somehow modified that step with the word routine. Uh, it just isn't a good, it's not a very descriptive word, it's not a very helpful word, and it can create an impression that you weren't really paying attention because it was just routine. That record should identify the record keeper. Who made the record? If you have very many people working in your office and you have them identify records with their initials, be sure that somewhere in your office you keep a list of those record keepers and their initials. Inevitably, the one case that winds up going to court is the one where there's an entry from a record keeper and you have forgotten what their name is. You seem very careless when you have entries in the record and you're unable to identify who made that entry. Don't enter information prematurely. Sometimes it's tempting when you have a quiet moment and you know that who's coming in next and you know what to expect when that patient and client come in. It's tempting to fill that extra minute by starting to fill out the forms. Unfortunately, that may be the one visit where the person fails to show up or it may be the one visit where they come in and have something different going on. And then it becomes a real problem explaining why you entered that information prematurely. Now the next one is one that gives me a particular problem and that's maintaining legibility. My handwriting is horrible. Those of you who know me know that already. But that's a real problem for me and because of that I maintain almost all of my records on computer. Otherwise it would be impossible for other people to make any use of those those records. Be consistent in your record keeping. The formatting for your entries, the length of your entries, should usually be similar from visit to visit. Now they shouldn't be identical, they shouldn't be copied 
went from one visit to another. But the information you include should be consistent. So that if somebody were to look at your records down the road, they wouldn't look at one particular visit and think you must have been careless on that visit because the records are less complete than the other records. Avoid or explain contradictions. Sometimes when you go back and look at your notes, you'll see something that really doesn't make sense. If you've made a contradiction in your, in your notes, you probably want to take a second to explain what happened. Perhaps one of the entries is a mistake, or perhaps there's a reason for what appears to be a contradiction in an explanation why it really isn't a contradiction. Anytime something unusual occurs, that should be documented. Take the time, uh, particularly when something unusual occurs, perhaps it's an unusual reaction from an animal or an unusual uh, uh, occurrence with the animal. Uh, those are the situations that are most likely to become problems down the road and you want them documented well. Avoid ambiguous words. Use words that are factual and as specific as possible. For example, instead of saying the patient seemed to be in less pain, you really can't tell what pain the patient is experiencing. But perhaps you can tell that the patient is being more interactive with humans, or the patient's uh, gait has improved, or the patient's demeanor has improved. Uh, those kinds of things you can put in the records and explain exactly what it is that's going on, which makes it clear that the patient is in less pain and is responding favorably to chiropractic care. Or on the other hand, if the patient is not responding favorably, again, use information or words that are as clear and factual as possible. Record all contact with your clients and patients, uh, including phone calls and telephone messages, emails, text messages, faxes. All that contact should be reflected in the file. Uh, sometimes those telephone calls can become critical sources of information if they're not included in, as the file. Don't criticize other providers. Even though you think another provider mistreated the animal or misdiagnosed the animal or was careless or mean to the animal, that's not information that needs to be reflected in the file. Merely state your conclusions and why you are reaching those conclusions. Exclude frivolous remarks. Uh, don't say things about a person's personality or how they're weird or anything along those lines. Anything that's unnecessary should not be included in the record. Using the same pen as you're writing your entry helps indicate that you created the entire entry at the same time and, and avoids a appearance that you started the entry and then added more information later on with a different pen. Uh, do not alter records. Sometimes it's tempting if you receive notice of a claim or notice of a complaint to go back and change the records. Avoid that temptation. I am sure that there have been times that people, doctors have gone back and changed records and not been caught. But I can also tell you that when the doctor is caught changing records, there is almost no way to defend that claim after that point. The doctor loses all their credibility, even if they provided good care for the patient, did everything the way they were supposed to do it. If they went back and changed the record in a way that's dishonest, the appearance of dishonesty is going to undermine everything that the doctor has to say. Before any reports are put in the patient's file, you should be sure and read those reports and make any comments that you need to follow up with on those reports. That includes x-ray reports, lab reports, or consultants reports. And develop a practice in your office of somehow marking that you have read those reports. An easy thing to do is to put your initials at the top of the first page to show your staff that you've read that report and it's ready to be filed. What you don't want to have happen is to have those reports come into your office and get put into a patient's file before you've had a chance to read it. Then you may not see the report until it's too late to respond appropriately. 
If you use computer-generated records, be sure you personalize those records. Too often I've seen records that are identical from visit to visit and from patient to patient, and it's just not credible that exactly the same thing happened on each and every visit. Take the time to notice or to record anything that's different or unusual or unique to a particular visit or a particular patient. Records should include abbreviations. It just takes too long to write out every single word. Your office ought to develop a legend that identifies or lists the abbreviations that are used. That helps all the record keepers to use the same abbreviations. It also helps someone else interpret the records down the road. Keeping financial and clinical information in separate files may make sense or it may not make sense. It depends on the practices in your office and the number of people working in your office. If you have someone who is handling the billing and the financial side of things only, then that file should be kept separately so that they only have the information they need in front of them. In today's world with computers, it's too easy to customize the forms that you use. Take the time to get make the forms match the way that you practice. Uh, all the statutes are going to provide rules about how long you should keep records. I think it's nice, if you can do it, to keep records forever. It's easy to scan records. It avoids the problem of trying to decide what should be shredded and what should not be shredded. And those scanned records, once they're reduced to a, a computer file, can be stored easily without taking much space. So that's something to think about. Now, if that's not practical, develop a system to identify the records that are ready to be destroyed. Be sure you do not destroy any records prematurely uh, and, and maintain that, that cycle of destroying records uh, appropriately. Of course, destroying records means you don't just toss them in the trash. You should shred them or take some other action to make them unusable or illegible. Review and archive files. Don't just stack the files up in your office. Take time to review what you actually need and store the files that you don't need anymore. When a client is being non-compliant, you should document that the client is being non-compliant. It may be something as simple as failing to keep appointments or failing to administer medication the way it should be administered or as often or regularly as it should be administered. Whatever the reason is, you want to document that non-compliance because it may help explain why the patient is not improving down the road. Uh, just like we talked about earlier with dictated but not read, Take the time to proofread any correspondence or reports that will be leaving your office. Take a minute to make corrections as appropriate. As far as the care provided, you should identify what technique is used to adjust the patient, where the patient is adjusted, and if you're working in a clinic with multiple tables and rooms, identify the equipment in the room that was used to adjust the patient. Sometimes that can help uh, establish whether a complaint is credible or not, depending upon how the patient was adjusted, where the patient was adjusted, and which table and room were used. And it's easy to develop a system to record that information very, very quickly and easily.